Scotland's Enduring Struggle, A History of Resistance Against English Domination. Scotland's history is a poignant narrative of resilience, defined by its struggles for sovereignty against the authoritative and self-centered ambitions of England. From the earliest interactions between these neighboring nations, England sought to impose its will on Scotland, viewing it as a territory to be subdued and exploited rather than as an equal partner. This mindset led to centuries of conflict, marked by wars, political manipulation, and economic coercion as England attempted to tighten its grip on the Scottish people. The story of Scotland's resistance against this relentless pressure is one of both heartbreak and hope, as the nation fought not just for survival, but for the right to determine its own destiny. The roots of Scotland's struggle against English dominance can be traced back to the late 13th century, during a time of political upheaval and uncertainty. The death of King Alexander III of Scotland in 1286, followed by the tragic demise of his granddaughter and heir, Margaret, maid of Norway, plunged Scotland into a succession crisis. With no clear heir to the throne, Scotland found itself vulnerable to external influence. Seizing this opportunity, King Edward I of England sought to assert his authority over Scotland, ostensibly offering to mediate the succession dispute, but with the ulterior motive of making Scotland a vassal state. Edward's initial maneuver was to support John Balliol as the King of Scotland, but he quickly undermined Balliol's authority, reducing him to a puppet king under English control. This humiliation sparked widespread discontent in Scotland and ignited the flames of rebellion. The First War of Scottish Independence began in 1296, led by figures who would become legends in Scottish history. William Wallace, a minor nobleman, emerged as one of the earliest and most iconic leaders of the resistance. His victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297 was a significant morale boost for the Scots demonstrating that they could defeat the seemingly invincible English army. However, the English response was swift and brutal. Edward the Furfers, known as the Hammer of the Scots, launched a devastating campaign to crush the rebellion. His forces employed scorched earth tactics, laying waste to towns and villages and leaving a trail of destruction across the Scottish countryside. The brutality of these campaigns was unmatched, with thousands of Scots killed or forced to flee their homes. Wallace himself was eventually captured, tried for treason, and executed in a particularly gruesome manner, his body dismembered and displayed as a warning to others who might dare to defy English rule. Despite Wallace's death, the fight for Scottish independence continued. Robert the Bruce, a descendant of Scottish nobility, took up the mantle of leadership and revitalized the resistance. His victory at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314 was a turning point in the war, solidifying his claim to the throne and dealing a significant blow to English ambitions in Scotland. The battle is remembered not just for its strategic importance, but for the sheer determination of the Scottish forces, who, despite being outnumbered, fought with a ferocity born of desperation and love for their homeland. The Wars of Independence were a time of great suffering for Scotland but they also forged a strong sense of national identity. The Scots had proven that they could resist English domination and that their desire for self-determination was unyielding. However, true peace and recognition of Scotland's independence were slow to come. It was not until the Treaty of Edinburgh-Northampton in 1328 that England formally recognized Scotland as an independent nation. Yet, even this treaty was born out of necessity rather than goodwill, as England, weakened by internal strife and the ongoing Hundred Years' War with France, was in no position to continue its campaigns in Scotland. In the centuries that followed, Scotland remained a proud and independent nation, but the shadow of England loomed large. The 16th century brought renewed tensions, particularly during the reign of Henry VIII, who sought to impose his religious reforms and extend English influence northward. The period known as the Rough Wooing, 1543-1551, 
saw a series of aggressive military campaigns by England aimed at forcing a marriage alliance between the young Mary, Queen of Scots, and Henry's son Edward. This was a clear attempt to bring Scotland under English control through dynastic union, but the Scots resisted fiercely, refusing to be coerced into submission. Mary, Queen of Scots, became a central figure in the ongoing struggle between Scotland and England. As a Catholic monarch in a predominantly Protestant Britain, she was viewed with suspicion by both England and her own Protestant subjects in Scotland. Her life was marked by personal scandal, political intrigue, and the constant threat of English intervention. After a turbulent reign that included forced abdication and civil war, Mary fled to England seeking refuge with her cousin, Queen Elizabeth Thais. However, Elizabeth saw Mary not as a relative in need of protection, but as a rival claimant to the English throne. Fearing that Mary's presence could inspire Catholic uprisings, Elizabeth imprisoned her for nineteen years before ultimately ordering her execution in 1587. Mary's death was a tragic symbol of the lengths to which England would go to maintain its dominance, and it left a deep scar on the collective memory of the Scottish people. The Union of the Crowns in 1603, when James VI of Scotland became James I of England, marked a significant shift in the relationship between the two nations. While this personal union brought the two kingdoms closer, it did not resolve the underlying tensions. Scotland remained an independent nation with its own parliament and legal system, but the seeds of future conflict had been sown. Over the next century, political and economic pressures mounted, culminating in the Treaty of Union in 1707. This treaty merged the Scottish and English parliaments, creating the Kingdom of Great Britain. The Treaty of Union was highly controversial in Scotland. Many Scots felt that their nation had been sold out by a corrupt elite, eager to secure personal gain at the expense of national sovereignty. The treaty's terms were seen as disproportionately favoring England, and Scotland was left with little to show for its sacrifices. This sense of betrayal was compounded by the economic hardships that followed the Union. While some Scots benefited from the increased trade and access to English markets, many others found themselves marginalized and impoverished. The sense of injustice was palpable, and it would fuel Scottish nationalism for centuries to come. The brutality of English rule was not limited to the battlefield. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, Scotland experienced a series of events that would leave lasting scars on its society. The Highland Clearances, in particular, were a dark chapter in Scottish history. Thousands of Highlanders were forcibly evicted from their ancestral lands to make way for sheep farming, often by English landlords who cared little for the welfare of their tenants. These clearances devastated communities, leading to mass emigration and the decline of Gaelic culture. The pain of these events is still felt today, as the descendants of those who were displaced struggle to reclaim their heritage. Despite the hardships, Scotland's spirit remained unbroken. The 19th and 20th centuries saw the rise of Scottish nationalism, as the people began to demand greater autonomy and recognition of their distinct identity. The creation of the Scottish National Party, SNP, in 1934, marked a turning point in the struggle for independence. The SNP advocated for self-governance and sought to protect Scotland's unique culture and institutions. The push for Scottish independence gained momentum in the latter half of the 20th century, culminating in the devolution of powers to the Scottish Parliament in 1999. This was a significant step forward, giving Scotland control over areas such as education, health, and justice. However, the issue of full independence remained unresolved. In 2014, Scotland held a historic referendum on independence. The No campaign, which argued for remaining in the United Kingdom, won with 55% of the vote. However, the debate did not end there. The UK's decision to leave the European Union, Brexit, in 2016, which Scotland overwhelmingly opposed, reignited calls for another referendum.
Many Scots felt that Brexit fundamentally changed the terms of the Union, as Scotland was taken out of the EU against its will. Today, the relationship between Scotland and England remains complex and fraught with tension. While Scotland enjoys a degree of autonomy, many Scots feel that their country should be fully independent. The Scottish National Party, SNP, which has dominated Scottish politics for years, continues to push for a second independence referendum. The UK government, however, remains resistant, leading to ongoing tension. In the hearts of the Scottish people lies a profound sense of identity and pride, forged through centuries of resistance and resilience. The memory of the bloodshed, the betrayal, and the relentless fight for autonomy continues to shape Scotland's path forward. The yearning for independence is not merely a political aspiration. It is the echo of a history filled with struggle and sacrifice. Scotland's story is one of a nation that has endured unimaginable hardships, but has never lost sight of its right to self-determination. The dream of an independent Scotland lives on, carried forward by the unbreakable spirit of its people, who have always believed that their land, their culture, and their future should be in their own hands.